Okay, welcome to CSS Part 4. Um, in Part 4 of CSS, we're going to be exploring external style sheets. What we've done in Parts 2 and 3 is to create a style sheet right here, which will make the rest of the page, this stuff here, look like this page. For example, if I was to cut this style sheet out and save it and refresh, my page looks like this. All right, so by having this style sheet is, and basically we're setting the background color, we're setting what the H1 and H2 tags and the paragraph tags and the unordered list tags look like. Um, so anytime we encounter one of those, it uses the style that we specified up here. For example, the H2, we can look over here and anything with H2 has that look. All right, um, the other thing that we did is we specified a couple different elements here. We have case, or I'm sorry, class and ID. And so anytime anything was specified with this class, for example, the class equals nav in this section here, um, it would use these codes. What's great about this is you only have to change one things in one spot. The only problem is that every single web page on your website would have to have this stuff built in. All right, and you would have to change each one, which in still is you know, a much improved system because in the old days we had to go in and change every single element. You know, we would have to say, you know, color equals this and color equals this and color equals this, every single line um, and then in the color, the font. Um, anyway, so what we're trying to do now is with external style sheets, we can put all of this information in one file and have that information available for all pages on our web page website. All right, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this all out. All right, and so I'm going to make sure we have a body tag here. And it should look like that. All right, so I'm going to create a new document now. And in my new document, I'm going to paste in some style. Okay, but we really don't need this stuff. We don't really need style or in style because all of this is going to, all of it, all it will include, I'm sorry, is the actual style elements. All right, so in this example, we have our background color, we have our color of our font, we have the font family we'll be using, we have specifics for background colors and stuff for H1 and H2 and paragraphs and unordered list, etc. And we, you know, we could, can leave or keep these. Um, but we'll probably be using these on every one of our pages. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that for now. All right, and I want to go ahead and save this to the same folder where I'm saving everything else, <laughs> in this case is my desktop. And I'm going to call this um, griffith.css. You can call it whatever, mypage.css, goober.css, whatever. And I'm going to do save. Okay, so if I go back and refresh this, it looks exactly the same. It still doesn't know what to do with this file. All right, so let me go ahead and open my other. Okay, so to connect to an external CSS file, a cascading style sheet file, um, what we want to do is we want to put inside the head. We don't want, forget the body. We want inside the head here, um, link, Okay, rel equals style sheet. All right, and then we want to have a href equals, um, let's see, we're, what do we call it? Griffith.css. And you know, again, yours can be called anything. Type equals text slash CSS. All right, so basically now, what this should do is this document should now link to my Griffith CSS and use these codes. All right, so hopefully, let's refresh. Yes, it works. All right, so now, the great thing is, I can forget about this page. I never have to, you know, unless I'm actually changing content on the page, I can close it and forget it. Sounds like one of those TV infomercials. Um, but now, this is all fine. I never have to make changes to this again. I can have 50 different pages like this that are linked 
to this external CSS page. And all I have to do with this external page is go in and change something. For example, if I change the background color to um, all, all red, let's say 99 green and 99 blue, every single page that linked to this, the background color would do that. Okay, that's pretty ugly. <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea. It, the external style sheets are the way to go, definitely. It will save you so much time in the long run that it's worth setting up the little extra bit. All right? And so, again, all we got to do, if we want to add something in here, we can have this really long style sheet, CSS file, and have a bunch of different things that we add in here. And our regular page, you know, we might have to go in later on and say, you know, if we want to make a certain section, you know, different, add in a an ID tag or a class tag or something the way we did here, ID equals footer. Um, another thing that's good about this, though, is if you copy this line, paragraph ID equals footer, and, you know, and then you paste it in each of your CSS documents, you'll have that consistent look and save every single page would change down here. I should also mention over here in your link, you can have these in different spots. For example, I can put put the href first and the rel second, and it should work exactly the same way. All right. So it kind of depends on your style. I personally prefer it this way so that I have the CSS file name out here in front. I can find it a little bit easier. Um, Okay, so let's look at our text again, our CSS file, and if we look at our actual browser page, you'll see that this kind of comes most way across the page here, and everything is to the left. That's because the default alignment is on the left. Okay, so we're going to go in here and make a few changes. For example, let's say we want our H1 tag. Let's go ahead and put our h1 tag as text align center. All right, now if we view this, that's what it looks like. Okay, but that doesn't really necessarily look better, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to where it was. Save it and make sure it works. All right. And I want to try to maybe make the whole page be centered. Not centered right down the middle, but the actual content be centered on the page. All right, so I'm going to jump back over here. And what I want to do is go back over to my page. Okay, so I'm going to put everything that's inside the body in something called a wrapper. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to go over here to my CSS file and I want to set up a wrapper ID. All right, and inside my wrapper ID, I want to say width 700 pixels and margin left is auto and margin right is auto. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and end my, t my wrapper tag here. All right, and then I'm going to jump back over to my web page itself, and inside the body tag, I'm going to put something. Um, I'm going to set the whole page inside a div, and I'm going to do ID equals wrapper. Now remember, what this is doing now is setting up a section with a blank space up, above and below, and anything following that will be inside that division. All right, and then before body ends, I want to end my division. All right, so if I save this and go and refresh, I now have a little bit of a margin on each side. Now, mine's a little bit different because I have a widescreen monitor and I'm trying to use it on 800 by 600, so it's going to look a little bit different, but it does help to have that in there. Okay, so if we go back over here to our CSS, and we add a little element here. Um, instead of width equals 700 pixels, we try um, width. Whoops, width equals 80%, for example. And now if I go back and refresh, 
you can see how it changes. Now again, every page that had that wrapper, um, this div wrapper, so wrapper is applied to all of the stuff inside this section between this div and this div, which is between this body and in body. All right. So you can see how it, it's very powerful to have your external CSS files because you really can have a lot of control over a lot of pages. Um, and it's good to try to come up with ideas in the beginning how you're going to have your page set up. Because if you know in advance that you're going to be av having things like the wrapper, you might want to make sure that every page has the same wrapper and has the same footer. Um, now, for example, if I was to put this paragraph here, which is the footer, under the div, how is that going to be different? Okay, if we save this and go back to our page and refresh, you'll see that our footer is now outside of the border area, outside of the div. All right, so if I go back in here for footer and I do um, text align center, or actually, let's try a right. And went over here and refreshed. You'll see that's a little bit different. All right. Typically, when I do my footers, I will align equal center. All right. Save. And so all of my pages will kind of have that same layout. All right. So I hope that helped you with understanding the basics of external CSS. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, give me a shout out, email me, and I'll do what I can. Thank you very much. <laughs>